Hello, and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 1, Tutorial 24A. This is the first of two tutorials focused on accounting for goodwill. Tutorial 24A emphasizes recognition of goodwill, while Tutorial 24B will review accounting for impairment of goodwill under ASPE and IFRS. This tutorial has two basic learning objectives. First, to review the determination of goodwill when purchasing net assets, including the allocation of purchase price discrepancies. And second, to record a business acquisition of net assets, including goodwill. This tutorial is based on the Spectre Corp example, so please make sure that you download the correct file so you can follow along. Tutorial 24A will cover requirements 1 and 2 in that problem. So let's begin with Spectre Corp requirement 1, where we will determine the goodwill resulting from the purchase of Zorin's net assets. And so we begin with the purchase price. By referring to the data, you will see that Spectre paid $350,000 cash plus 100,000 common shares at a market value of $1.50 to purchase the net assets of Zorn. And so that is a net purchase price or total purchase price of $500,000. Next, we determine what the book value of the net assets purchased are. And there are two ways to do this. One is we can simply take assets minus liabilities. So Zorn's assets totaled $898,800 and the liabilities were $551,000 gives a net equity of $347,800, which can actually be confirmed by adding the $50,000 in common shares plus the $297,800 of retained earnings. So basically book value of the net assets is simply the remaining equity after taking assets minus liabilities. So when we take our purchase price minus the book value of net assets, that gives us what we call purchase price discrepancy and our $500,000 purchase price minus $347,800 in book value of net assets gives us a purchase price discrepancy of $152,200. Then what happens is we have to take this purchase price discrepancy and we're going to figure out how much of that is allocated to the fair value differences in any of the assets or liabilities. So make sure that you review the problem to identify where the fair value differences are identified. The data says that all amounts reported approximate their current fair values with the exception of inventory, land and patents. So we're going to look at only the items that have differences between fair value and book value. It's usually easy to start with the assets. And when we're dealing with assets, I found a good trick to determine which way, whether you have a positive or negative, works best if you take the fair value minus the book value. So our inventory has a $21,000 fair value, which is less than the $34,000 book value. So there's a discrepancy of 13,000 negative. The next item that has a different fair value from book value is land. So land has a fair value of 197,500 versus a book value of 152,500. So that gives us a $45,000 increase in value of the land versus what it is carried at. And the last item to look at is the patents. From the data, the patents have a fair value of 65,000 versus a book value of 85,000. So we subtract the book value from the fair value to get $20,000. And again, that's negative because the book value exceeds the fair value. And then what we do is we add all of those fair value differences together. So what we have here is the excess of fair value to book value of the land is more than the excess of book values to fair values of the inventory and the patents. So that amount nets out to $12,000. And what that means for us is that of this $152,200 purchase price discrepancy, 12,000 of that can be allocated to the fair value differences in those assets. So once we take the purchase price discrepancy and determine how much is allocated to fair value differences, in this case $12,000, the amount that's left over is the goodwill. And the goodwill represents the remaining unallocated purchase price discrepancy. That's all there is to it. We now move on to requirement two, which is simply to prepare the journal entry to record Spectre Corp's purchase of Zorin's net assets. We begin by debiting cash for $75,000, which is the amount of cash that Zorin has on their books. Next, we can record the acquisition of the accounts receivable. Now, there's one of two ways we could do this. The first is to record the accounts receivable at 127200 
which is its gross balance, and include the estimate for bad debts or the allowance for doubtful accounts at 15200 Alternatively, and this is what uh, Lyrics will do, so if you're doing your homework in Lyrics, you should do it using the net method. Apply 112000 to accounts receivable, which would be the fair value of the accounts receivable net of any allowance for doubtful accounts. So you have two approaches to take. You can use the accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts or the net of 112,000 directly to the accounts receivable and then leave out the allowance for doubtful accounts. The remainder of this problem will keep it the way it's shown here using the two separate accounts. Next, we record or debit inventory for 21,000, which is the fair value. Then land at 197,000, which is also fair value. Next, we can record the buildings and the equipment. So we will debit the buildings for the net carrying value of $375,000 and the equipment carried at a net value of $65,300. It's important to note, so on acquisition, these assets are recorded at their carrying value with no accumulated depreciation because that's built into the net value. The carrying value then becomes the new depreciable cost. So upon the acquisition of these assets, their new to uh, Spectre and so the depreciation starts all over again. Another important thing to note however is that normally all the assets would be recorded at their fair values. However, in this problem the data says that with the exception of land, inventory, and patents that the carrying value approximates the fair values. So in this case, by recording them at their carrying value of 375,000, 65,300, we are in essence recording them at their fair values. Then we will debit the patents account for 65,000, which is also fair value. Now I'm going to include a debit item here for goodwill, but I'm going to put a couple question marks here because we can use a journal entry approach to actually prove or determine how much the goodwill should actually be. But based on our previous calculations, we determined the goodwill to be $140,200. So that will be our check figure. So for now, let's leave the, uh, the debit blank and we'll see how the rest of the problem works out. So now we can move on to any credits in our journal entry. Recall from the data that the Spectre paid $350,000 in cash to purchase Zorin. So we show that as a credit here. However, we could alternatively, instead of recording a debit to cash for $75,000 from the cash that's included in Zorin's assets and record a credit of $350,000, we could offset and therefore not show any cash debit and show instead a $275,000 net cash credit for the purchase. So either of those is acceptable. Next is to credit common shares. Recall in this transaction, a Spectre is paying $350,000 in cash and issuing 100,000 shares at $1.50. So that's $150,000 credit to common share. In purchasing Zorin's net assets, Spectre is also taking on any of the debt that Zorin has. So we're going to have to record a credit for 135,000 of Zorin's accounts payable. In addition, Spectre is accepting a mortgage that is on Zorn's books, so we're going to have to make sure that we credit the mortgage payable for $416,000. Now, if we were to sum up all of the debits, we would end up with $926,000, and if we summed up all the credits, we would end up with $1,066,200, and the difference between these two is $140,000. 200, which would be the adjustment necessary to make our journal entry balance and therefore proves that the goodwill calculation is correct. Okay, and now we can conclude with some key points to remember. First, goodwill is the excess amount remaining after allocating any purchase price discrepancy to differences in book values and fair values of any net assets acquired. And so that includes looking at differences between fair value and book value of both assets and liabilities. We determine the goodwill based on the purchase price. We subtract the book value of the net assets acquired and subtract any allocations to differences in fair values and whatever's left over is the goodwill. Next, accounts receivable and allowances for doubtful accounts should be recorded separately, i.e. they should not be netted out. So you need to have a separate debit to accounts receivable and a separate credit to AFDA. Finally, PPE assets are recorded at their fair values with no accumulated amortization or depreciation. So those fair values become the new depreciable cost. This concludes tutorial 24A on recognition of goodwill. You should now proceed to tutorial 24B to review accounting for impairment of goodwill under both ASPE and IFRS.